Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I am Vincent Chan. Today we are going to continue our uh, series of frequency response of amplifiers and focus on the one of the most classic examples, which is the MOSFET common source amplifier. So I'm going to develop a series of lesson or lecture video around the high frequency analysis and also the low frequency analysis of the MOSFET common source amplifier. Common source amplifier. High frequency response of MOSFET common source amplifier. Part one, introduction. Uh, let's quickly review the concept of the three frequency bands. Here is the common source amplifier. The AM is so-called the mid-band voltage gain. And the mid-band, the value could, uh, is you can quickly uh, use the analysis my inspection to get the mid-band voltage gain of the common source amplifier. And going on the moving tour to the high frequency range, the gain will fall. And then in the low frequency side, the gain will decay. And then the definition of three decibel bandwidth is the difference between upper three decibel bandwidth, omega h, and the lower three decibel bandwidth uh, frequency omega L. And the high frequency behavior, high frequency behavior is dominated by those internal resist capacitance of the semiconductor device. And the low frequency behavior is controlled, is affected by those external like the coupling and the bypass capacitor. So in this lecture video, we are going to because we talk about the high frequency ana analysis, high frequency response. So we are going, we are only going to focus on the internal capacitance effect. And then when you analyze the high frequency behavior and the low frequency, you combine three bands together. You are going to get a general form of uh, the transfer function, uh, which is the AV as function of X the complex uh, frequency, so which is the mid-band times a low frequency function, times a low frequency function, and also times a high frequency function. So as you can imagine, this equation is going to be very intimidated. It's going to be, be nasty, very intimidated. All right, so this is the general form of the amplifier transfer function. And the mid-band voltage gain, as I mentioned earlier, you can base on the Ohm's law and the divider use the analysis by inspection to get this outcome. So now, let's quickly review the mid-band analysis. The negative GM, the three, the parallel combination of the three, L, DO and uh, the divider uh, ratio, which is based on this equivalent circuit. This is the mid band equivalent circuit. So VO over VGS minus GM, three combination, and the ratio between R and the RN. So when you go on to the high frequency, and then the internal capacitance is going to it's going to be manifested. It's going to be manifest. It's going to reveal. The effect is going to expose. And when you move on the higher frequency, and then the effect will become more uh, manifested, more uh, pronounced, all right? More conspicuous. And then if you uh, place on the, the high frequency model of the device, Consider the high frequency behavior, high frequency, high frequency model of the MOSFET, then you can include the capacitance between gate and the source. Look at the slide, which is the CGS and the capacitance between gate and the drain. So, but if you study, have ever studied the high frequency model of the MOSFET, actually there are five internal capacitors parasitic capacitances, uh, other than CGS, gate to source, CGD, gate to drain, there are also another three, 
uh, which is the gate to body CGB and the drain to body CDB and also the source to body. But in this occasion, in this occasion, because it's a common source, so source and the body is usually tied together. So CGB, CSB doesn't, uh, won't, it's going to be short circuit. So now there are only four, four. But for the CGB, if you learn the lesson in the future, in the future, so CGD can be included, can be combined with the input capacitance, which is not, uh, is, you know, even you want, even someone want you to consider this, uh, I, I don't think it's going to trouble you. So the only approximation here, I think, uh, worth to mention is we neglect the effect of the CDB, the drain to body capacitance. But maybe someone asks you to consider this, because if, if, if you learn, because I'm going to teach you a series, a series of lessons on the high frequency analysis skill. And one of the lessons you are going to learn is the Miller theorem. So I believe it's going to be in lecture three. Well, this is lecture one of the common source high frequency to open circuit time constant, lecture three. So I'm going to teach you a concept called based on the Miller theorem. So, and then uh, based on the Miller theorem, then you will learn the CDB is not important. So it's totally fine if you neglect the CDB, all right? So I just want to, I, I spent uh, three, four minutes to try to justify um, this uh, high frequency equivalent circuit. So where only two capacitors are considered, okay? So CGS and gate to drain, gate to source, and also gate to drain. But how are we gonna analyze this? This is the introduction lesson for high frequency analysis, all right? So this is the major key, uh, this is the major uh, learning point for this lecture, all right? High frequency analysis methodologies. High frequency analysis methodology. So in the future three uh, lectures, you're gonna learn. So we're gonna use the three method to tackle the high frequency behavior. So this series of lessons is really, really important for you because it's going to lay you a foundation so that you are able, because there are tons of circuits out there, right? So there's no way I'm going to teach you to solve every cir circuits, the high frequency response. And so, but I, I'm going to teach you, this is the classic example, which means you can apply the concept you learn from this circuit, hopefully to uh, many other circuit as well, all right? So here's the first one, time constant method. Time constant, what kind of time constant? Open circuit time constant. And the uh, upside of the time constant is, is simple and uh, straightforward and not time consuming. And now the second one is the Miller theorem. It's kind of intuitive and it's conceptual. It's intuitive and conceptual. It gives you a sense of uh, what frequency response is about. And then the last one is the nasty one. <laughs> it's the transfer function derivation. You're going to solve the circuit, the network, and the uh, and then you will get the transfer function. It's complicated, but for the beginner, I still encourage you to to hang on to to this this part, the transfer function, because once you been there, done that, and you know you have proof uh, based on the transfer function, and then in the future you can use the less time-consuming one to tackle 
the circuit problems such as the time constant, the first two, and the Miller theorem. So here's the takeaway. For the common source amplifier, here's the high frequency equivalent circuit where two internal capacitors are considered. Gate source, CGS, gate drain, CGD. Three ways to solve this high frequency behavior. Number one, time constant method, open circuit time constant method. Number two is Miller theorem, Miller theorem, Miller effect. And then number three is the exact transfer function derivation. So I'm going to design to develop the three other video to fo focus on each one of this, right? So look forward to seeing you in the next lecture where we're going to teach you about how to use the open circuit time constant to tackle this, to solve this. Thanks for watching.